Lipton Soup present Inner Sanctum Mysteries. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. This is your host to welcome you in through the squeaking door. We're having a party tonight for two of my favorite corpses. I call them Romeo and Juliet. They're newly dead, you know. <laughs> yes, yeah, she's the daughter of a famous society murderer, and he's the pride of the East Side Morgue. Oh, they're so happy together in their mausoleum built for two. And you should see the bridal casket. Shame it... on you, Mr. Host, making fun of such a tragedy. But, Mary, it was a touching ceremony. Of course, I stood up for the groom. Naturally, the poor fellow couldn't stand up for himself. <laughs> oh, please. It's an occasion for tears, not for laughter. That's right, Mary. Why, when the bride appeared wearing her grandmother's shroud, everyone had to be cheered up with Lipton tea. Now, oh, that's enough. I will not have Lipton's mentioned at a time like that. Lipton tea is for people who know how to enjoy life. These are the folks who really appreciate Lipton's famous brisk flavor. Yes, that word, brisk, B-R-I-S-K, makes a big difference when you're sitting down to a cup of hot tea. Brisk means that Lipton tea tastes fresh and full-bodied, never flat or wishy-washy. I wish you'd try Lipton's, folks, even if you're not a regular tea drinker, because you just don't know how good tea can be till you know how good Lipton's is. Well, Mary, let's tee off into tonight's story. Hmm? It's called The Shadow of Death. And it's an original radio play by that boogie-woogie man, Robert Sloan. Yes, and our star tonight is Richard Widmark, who plays the role of Howard. All set? Then turn off the lights and let in the shadow of death. On a lonely dirt road that borders the village cemetery, a single car slows to a stop and parks in the moonless night. Inside it, a man leans back in his seat and reaches for the hand of the girl he loves. Howard. Yes, dear? Why did you stop here? The cemetery is right over there. Oh, I didn't notice. You drove here last night, too. Did I? Yes. <laughs> well, you're not frightened, are you? Tonight I am. You've been so strange, so far away. I... I feel as if I hardly know you. Darling, you mustn't feel that way. What's the matter, Howard? There's something on your mind. I'm going away, Marie. Oh, no. And I'm not coming back. Howard, why? Well, I don't really know if I can explain it. It seems so incredible, and, and yet I know it must be true. What? Something I've discovered about myself. Something strange and frightening, Marie. Wherever I go... I seem to cast a shadow. A shadow of death. I... I don't understand. No, I didn't either at first. I thought it was just a strange coincidence. But it isn't. It's me. I bring death wherever I go. Oh, Howard, you don't really believe that. Well, how can I believe anything else? Haven't you noticed what happens to every living thing I have around me? No. I can't keep a pet of any kind, a cat or a dog. Even a plant dies when I have it in the house. Oh, darling, that's just your imagination. You've been working too hard. You need a rest. No, I'm going away, Marie. I don't want any harm to come to you. Oh, no, please. Nothing's going to happen to me. This is just... What's the matter? Well, nothing. I... I was just... Looking at the flowers in my corsage. Good heavens. They're dead. You don't believe me either, do you, Doctor? Well, let's not put it on that basis, Howard. After all, I've been trained to look for the physical causes of death, not the supernatural. Then what do you think I should do? Frankly, I'd like you to spend a few weeks away from these surroundings. Go up to the sanitarium I told you about. They'll take good care of you up there. All right, Doctor. I'll make arrangements to go tomorrow. But I know it won't do any good. You'll be surprised, Howard. Two or three weeks from now, you look back on this as a... 
Yes. That's strange. Those goldfish in my aquarium. They're all dead. Tell me the truth, Howard. Are you comfortable here in the sanitarium? They, they don't believe me. They don't believe that people die when I dream about them. People die? Yes, you... didn't you know that? Every time I have a dream about someone, it, it's a sign of death. And the next morning when I wake up, I look in the obituary column and I see the name of the person I dreamt about. Well, Howard, what have they done to you here? Nothing, only they don't believe me. The, the, the dreams, I mean. I had to prove it to them this morning. And it made me feel very bad. What made you feel bad? The dream I had last night. I killed a man, Marie. What? I killed him in my dream. Oh. He was a good friend of mine, too. He lived right across the hall. Oh, Howard, please. You've got to get hold of yourself. But I'm afraid, Marie. I don't want to dream anymore. Oh, darling, I can't bear to see you this way. What way? I'll get you out of here. I promise, Howard. I'll get you out of here today. <laughs> Marie, there isn't a chance of getting him out. You may have to stay in this institution for months. Oh, no. Dr. Gerard, can't you see what's happening to him? He's losing his mind. Well, I know he's taken a turn for the worse. That's all the more reason for keeping him here. It might be dangerous to discharge him now. Then why don't you do something to help him? We're doing everything we can. It's not easy. He persists in thinking he has this strange power of death. Nobody is able to convince him he's wrong. What about the man across the hall? Howard said they were good friends. That's another thing. They were good friends. But unfortunately, that man died this morning. Come in. Ah, oh, good morning, Howard. How do you feel today? Oh, much better, Doctor, much better. No bad spells last night? No curious moods? No, I feel fine. Almost well enough to go home. Let me look at your eyes. You will let me go home again, won't you, Doctor? Yes, Art, of course, of course. You, uh, haven't had any of those dreams lately, have you? No, no, not for a long time. Are you sure? Well, I, uh, I did have one last night. You dreamt that someone was dead? Yes, I did, but, but, but I, I, I know it's not true. It can't be true. Whom did you dream about, Marie? No, Doctor. I dreamt about you. That's why I know I'm wrong. You're alive, Doctor. Don't you understand? You've proven it to easy, me. Easy, easy now, Harlan. Tell me about your dream. Well, I, I dreamt I was going home. And all the people I'd killed in my dreams were alive again. Yes, go on. Well, somehow or other, I could see my house from this window. And everything was just as it was a long time ago. The flowers were growing. The dog was in the yard. The one that was run over? Yes, everything was well again. And I was well, too. That's why I wanted to go home. But you and Marie's mother didn't want me to. She was in the dream, Marie's mother? Yes, I, I don't know how she happened to be there, but she was. That's all right, Harry. Right. Go on. Well, I started to leave, Doctor, but she held me back. She held my arms like this. And then you jumped up to ring the bell for help. But before you reached it, I was on top of you like this. Oh, I had my fingers around your throat. Oh, you... And I was squeezing it so hard. I, I could feel your windpipe bending back oh, no. until you couldn't breathe anymore. Oh, God. Let go. That's what you said last night, you fool. Oh, my God. Uh, you wanted me to let go. Uh, 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 I held on until your face turned as blue as it is now. It was almost black before I let you go. But first, first I made sure you were dead. And then I dropped the body. You see, Doctor, my dreams do come true. <laughs> well, have you had any good dreams lately? Howard has. And you know, his dreams don't need interpretation. 
Uh, they need cremation. <laughs> Say, it's a lucky thing that guy works on the night shift. It'd be awful if he had daydreams, too. <laughs> Good gracious, yes. His dreams not only walk, they commit murder. <laughs> Mary, I was about to say that. Please leave the jokes to me. How would you like it if I talked about tea? Hmm? Well, for goodness sake, I listen to the story, too. And I must say, I'm glad I'm not his um, dream girl. <laughs> that does it. Friends, let me tell you about Lipton tea. All right, you win. But it's only because I have something important to say about Lipton's. Folks, did you know that Lipton's is the largest selling brand in the whole world? Yes, and the reason for that is Lipton's well-known brisk flavor. You know, that word brisk is the tea expert's word for tangy, full-bodied tea, for Lipton tea. Ah, uh, Lipton's is always fresh and spirited, never flat or, or wishy-washy. That's why lots of people drink it not just at mealtimes, but whenever they're taking it easy for a minute during the day. So, folks, try Lipton's and get acquainted with that brisk flavor. Well... Let's get back to our dream man and find out what he does in his waking moments. When we left him last, he had just done a little manual work on Dr. Gerard's windpipe. And now, as the good doctor lies comfortably on the sanitarium floor, Howard is in the process of going through his pocket. Well, I'll have to have the keys to your car, doctor. I'll need them to get back home. I hope you won't mind if I hide you under this bed may take them a little bit longer to find the body if I do. But... Yes, who is it? Dr. Frisbee, Howard. May I come in? Well, yes. Yes, I, I'll open the door. What is it, Doctor? Well, I was looking for Dr. Gerard. I thought he was in here. Oh, yes, yes, he, he was a moment ago. I, I, I think he went down the hall. Uh, no, I just came from there. I guess he went back to his office. Oh, yes, I guess he did. How are you making out, Howard? Fine, fine, doctor, fine, fine. You seem a little nervous. Your hands are shaking. Oh, well, I... And you see, you've dropped your keys. I'll get them. It's all right, Howard. I wasn't going to take them away from you. But I am wondering how you happen to have any keys in your possession. Well, they're... Uh, they're, they're, they're not really mine. Well, whose are they, Dr. Gerard's? Uh, yes, yes, he, he left them here. I, I mean... You he... mean... Uh, you stole them from him. No. Now, oh, come, Howard. You can't expect me to believe Dr. Gerard would give you any keys. Now, you'd better let me have them so I can give them back. But I, I let didn't... Let me have them, Howard. Thank you. You won't tell him I took them, will you? No, Howard, I won't tell. But uh, please don't take them again. I'll go anyway. I'll get out onto the road and I'll get a hit, yes, sir. I'll get away. I've got to speak to Marie. Going down, mister? I guess not. I guess I'm... A... Oh, oh, here comes another one. Hey, stop! Give me a ride, will you? Give me a ride, please, mister? Oh, he's stopping. Hey, hey, wait for me, will you, mister? I'm coming. I'll be right there. Oh, gee, thanks, mister. You, you going into town? Yes, Howard, but you're not. Dr. Frisbee. Yes, I've been watching you ever since you took those keys. I thought you'd try something like this. Well, I, I had to, doctor. I understand. You better get in the car, Howard, so we can talk this thing over. All right. You know, it's silly to run away from our place up there. If you really want to go home, all you have to do is ask. I did ask. When? This morning. Oh, wait a minute. Don't start the car. Why not? There's a truck coming. In back. Where? Oh, Howard, let go of me, Howard! I've got to have this car, Doctor. When I finished with it, I'll return it to you. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Walker. Who's this? Howard. You remember me, don't you? Howard, where are you? In a telephone booth around the corner. You were out in the sanitarium? No, I've been discharged. Dr. Gerard said I could go. You mean you're well again? Yes, I'm completely cured. 
Oh. Oh, I see. You don't sound very happy about it, Mother. Where's Marie? She's, uh... She's out on a date. When will she be back? Well, I, I don't know, Howard. She she didn't say. I've got to see her again, Mrs. Walker. I've got to see her once more before I die. Before you die? Yes, I haven't much longer to live. Now, where is she? Well, I... Uh, I, I think she said she was going to movies. You're lying. I'm not, Howard. I, I, I just can't be sure. But if you go to the theater, you, you might find her there. You don't want me to see her, do you? Uh, no, not until I've spoken to Dr. Gerard. Why? Don't you believe me? Don't you believe I'm well again? No, Dr. Gerard... Never mind what he said. Mrs. Walker, you mustn't dislike me. I'm very fond of you. You... You are, Howard? Yes. I've been thinking a lot about you lately. While I was in the sanitarium. Last night, I even had a dream about you. Keep bringing that number, operator. I've, I've got to locate Dr. Gerard. Why the hurry, Mrs. Walker? Howard, how did you get in here? Through the back door. Put that phone down, please. But I... Put it down, I said. Yes, yes. You lied to me about Marie being at the movies, Mrs. Walker. I, I didn't mean to, Howard. I, I told you I wasn't sure she was there. Where is she? This time I've got to know. Howard, how dare you? Get your hands off me. I'm not in a gentle mood, Mrs. Walker. I'm fighting against time. You've done something wrong, Howard. You've escaped from the sanitarium. No, I've done more than that, Mrs. Walker. I've killed a man. Howard. Two men, three men. I, I can't remember how many it was, but there's going to be one more. Howard, you, you wouldn't kill me, would you? Wouldn't I? What have you done to deserve your life? Uh, there, Let it uh, ring. But, but that may be my call. Your call is coming now, Mrs. Walker. Howard, please. Put down that knife. Will you tell me where Marie is? I told you, I don't know. I don't know. Then I'll wait for her. Right here. Howard, you can't. No, no, you can't. Oh! Yes, I can, Mrs. Walker. Hello? Hello, this is Dr. Frisbee, sanitarium calling. Is Mrs. Walker there? I'm sorry. You have the wrong number. <laughs> Marie, darling. Why, why, Howard. Howard, what are you doing here? I've been waiting for you to come home, darling. Aren't you glad to see me? Oh, yes, of course I am. It was such a surprise I couldn't catch my breath for a minute. Where's Mother? Upstairs. Why? Oh, I just wanted to know. You had no other reason? No. Howard, why are you staring at me? I'm not really staring. I'm just looking at you, darling. It's been such a long time since I've seen you. I'd almost forgotten what you were like. Well, uh, let's go inside. No, if you don't mind, darling, I'd rather go for a ride. You're... You're all right, aren't you, Howard? I, I mean, you're, you're completely well now. Oh, can't you see I am? Yes, but I... I yes. Then let's not wait any longer, darling. Come on, we'll go for a ride. <laughs> late, Howard. Don't you think we ought to go back? No, not yet, Marie. You just keep driving. These few moments we have together, maybe I'll... Marie, why are you stopping here? Uh, we're low on gas, dear. I, I don't want to get stuck on the highway. Oh. Yes, ma'am? Will it be? Uh, uh, you better fill her up. All right. And uh, have you got a telephone here? Yes, ma'am. Right inside. Uh, thank you. Wait a minute, Marie. What do you want with a telephone? Oh, I was going to call my mother. She'll be worried about me. Oh, no, she won't. She knows you're with me. Besides, uh, she went out for a little while. Well, maybe she's back by now. It won't hurt to call, will it? No, I guess it won't. I'll be right back, Howard. Well, hurry, darling. I want to be with you as much as I can. Yes, I won't be a minute. Number, please. Operator, quick, get me the police. 
this is an emergency. Yes, ma'am, right away. Headquarters, Sergeant Dunn speaking. Sergeant, listen carefully. I won't have time to repeat it. The murderer of Dr. John Gerard is right here in a filling station on Route 6 at the Hadley intersection. What shall I do? I can't keep him here. Does he know you're on to him? No. No, he doesn't know I read the story in a newspaper just before I got home. He was waiting there for me, and I haven't been able to get to a phone since. Well, don't take any chances. He's a homicidal maniac. Don't even try to stall him if he wants to leave. No. Just stay where you are and we'll be over there in four minutes. Oh, no, no, that's no good. He won't let me stay here. He'll take me with him. Marie. Oh, he's calling for me now. Marie. Uh, just a moment, Howard. What can I do, Sergeant? What can I do? Well, give me the description of the car, quick. It, it's a dark blue sedan. License number 468J3. We've been going east on Route 6. But... Oh, I can't talk anymore. He's coming. Marie, for heaven's sake, what kept you so long? Oh, I had a hard time getting the number. The... There was something wrong with the lines. But you were talking to somebody. Yes, I, I was speaking to Mother. You were speaking to your mother? Yes. She told me not to stay out too late. You're lying, Marie. No, I'm not, Howard. I talked to her. You talked to the police. That's why you lied to no. me. No. You did. Your mother's dead. Howard. I know, because I killed her. Howard. Be quiet. Get back into the car. You're coming with no. me. No. No, Howard. You're hurting my arm. Get back in the car. Hey, you leave her alone. Keep out of this, you fool. Leave her alone. I told you to keep out of this. Oh, I know. Hey, put down that wrench. I'll put it down. Oh, oh, oh. oh how could you? Never mind. Get into the car. Howard, why are you stopping here? Don't you know where we are, Marie? This is the cemetery. Where we stopped before. Yes. I like it here. It's so quiet and peaceful among the dead. Let's walk through the grounds. Oh, please. Why not, Marie? We're among friends. So many of our loved ones are buried here. It's nice to be near them. Come on, Marie. All right, Howard. You know, darling, we haven't much more time together. The shadow of death has fallen across our path. You said something like that before, but you never told me why. I'm being selfish, Marie. I know I have to die, and I want you to come with me. Why do you have to die, Howard? Because I... I haven't been true to myself, darling. I haven't been true to this power I have. Power of death? Yes. I've helped it along sometimes. Like that dream I had about my friend in the sanitarium. Like the flowers in my garden. Like those fish of Dr. Gerard's. You killed them? Yes. I knew they were going to die. But I shouldn't have helped them. That's why I'm being punished. But Howard, why are you punishing me? I don't want to die alone, Marie. We've been away from each other so much, darling. I I want us to be together from now on. But... Don't be afraid, darling. I'll be gentle, Marie. So gentle. But you're making a mistake, Howard. No. You are. You've forgotten what you've done. You can't kill me, darling. Why not? Why, good heavens, Howard, don't you remember? Don't you remember that day at the sanitarium? You said you dreamt about me? No. No, I couldn't have. Yes, you did. Didn't they tell you what happened? No. Your dream. Your dream, it was true. That's why you can't kill me now. Marie, you... You mean... Yes, Howard. I'm dead. I, I can't believe it. Oh, you must believe it. I... Here, here. Look at this tombstone. My grave is right here. No. Read what it says. Read the name on it. It's your name, Marie. Your name. Marie Walker. Yes. Then you... Then you really are dead. I told you I was, Howard. The shadow of death passed over me. Then let it pass over me. Oh. Oh. Hey, got him, Sam. Got him the first shot. Keep out of the way, miss. He may not be dead yet. No, I... 
I'm sure he's dead. Well, you certainly had a close call. Took us all this time to locate your car. Finally spotted it on the road. You all right? Yes, sir. I'm all right. Yeah. The name of my grandmother's tombstone saved me. How's that? Oh, it, it doesn't matter. Say, that's funny. What? This guy was shot through the shoulder. My bullet wounds weren't serious enough to kill him. What do you mean? Well, I know it sounds crazy, but my shots didn't kill him. He was dead before I hit him. What a shame. Wasting two perfectly good bullets on a guy that was dead all the time. Well, at least they won't have to go far to bury him. Here's one villain who died practically in the middle of his own plot. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it funny how many of our stories seem to take place in cemeteries? You know, Mary, I think you ought to open up a concession in the cemetery. And you know what you could sell. Hmm? Don't say it. Don't you dare. You know very well that the place to buy Lipton tea is and always will be your neighborhood grocery store. And, folks, that reminds me. You'll find it wiser to buy Lipton's in the larger, more economical size packages. That way you not only save money, but you also make sure that you won't run short on a beverage that's really a household necessity. Brisk-flavored Lipton tea. <laughs> Before I put the skeletons back in their closets, I'd like to give you a parting word of advice. A body should never be left alone at the morgue at night. After all, it might become slab happy. <laughs> oh, by the way, this month's Inner Sanctum mystery novel is The Whistling Legs by Roman McDougald. Yes, and let me tell you about next week's Inner Sanctum story. Directed by Hyman Brown... And brought to you by Lipton Tea and Lipton Soup. You know, usually our stories are about people who live six feet under the ground. But for next week, we've dug a lot deeper. In fact, it takes place in China. <laughs> and as a special added attraction, we've unearthed a new kind of character for you. Unearthed is right. This guy's been dead for 20 centuries. <laughs> And now it's time to close the squeaking door, so... Good night. Pleasant dreams. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ladies, if your child comes home from school for lunch, you want to give him a quick but appetizing meal. And that's why you should serve Lipton's noodle soup. You see, Lipton's takes no time to prepare, and yet it has a fresh-cooked, old-fashioned, chickeny flavor, and is just swimming with tender golden egg noodles. Your children will love Lipton's grand homemade taste. So don't forget to serve Lipton's noodle soup. And don't forget to tune in next Tuesday night for another Inner Sanctum Mystery. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. It's intermission time at the Baba Gully Show. Time to refresh yourself and visit our snack bar. Got a yen for some hot popcorn? How's about your favorite soft drinks, which are sparkling cold? And there's all kinds of candy to tempt you. It's radio time, folks. Enjoy the rest of the program. Hope you're enjoying today's radio program. When it's done, be sure to check out our channel over at Watchwaddle. Enjoy some tunes with a nice cold soda. Grab a Coke, cup or bottle, don't forget to watch Waddle. Hope you're enjoying today's radio program. When it's done, be sure to check out our channel over at Watchwaddle. 
Enjoy some tunes with a nice cold soda. Be of any more help? Well, oh, thank you, Joseph. We'll have it. Christian? Bill Craig, drowned. Poor Louise, her only son. Bill Craig, but I saw him only this afternoon. He was going swimming. Where did you find him? In the swamp near the ferry. Only his legs were sticking out. <laughs> we had a hard time to get him loose. How dreadful. The noose! Oh, quiet, quiet, I say. Can't you see, you fools? There are only a few vines and roots around his neck, nothing else. It's a perfect news for anybody who can see. It's the strangler again. Oh, don't be silly. Look. You, you see? If the county council had listened to me, they would have allotted money to drain the swamp. This wouldn't have happened. Draining the swamp would never drive away the strangler. It's not that easy to get rid of him. I, there isn't any strangler. He exists only in your own superstitious mind. Is that so? Then why did you send your son to the city never to return? It's because you know you're all marked men. You and Chris and Joseph and my husband. Oh, you're crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Salt and Jeffers carry the boy to his home. I'll go ahead and inform his mother. <laughs> It 
Was the Strangler got Bill? Everything is coming true as he said it would. Word for word. Let's go and take down that cursed rope. Yes. What are you doing here at this time of night? Just take us across to the other side, Joseph. Bill Craig tonight. A noose round his neck. I saw Bill, but I didn't see anything like a noose. The strangler got him. <laughs> You'd believe anything, wouldn't you? Why doesn't he visit me? I live closest to his grave. He will. You too are a marked man. I'd like to see that old drunken car shop again. He was all right, yes, a no good. But was he a murderer? Of course he was. Everyone knows that. It was your testimony that hanged him, Joseph. He offered an alibi. If only you had listened to the few who didn't agree. But no, you had to act quickly. He just couldn't die fast enough for your crazy race. And you got what you always wanted, didn't you, Joseph? His fairy. What do you mean? Nothing, nothing. Then hold your tongue. noose was made when they found Farmer Brooklyn murdered in his field. When they accused Ferryman Douglas of the crime and hanged him, he screamed that he was innocent. But that didn't stop them. It was then he spoke the curse. Joseph, why have you let that rope hang here all these years? It serves as a warning. A warning. To whom? Joseph, we're going to take that down. No, it stays there. Since that's been there, there hasn't been any more trouble. There's been more trouble than ever since it hangs there. Have you forgotten Bill Jenkins, who was thrown from his horse and choked to death by the rain? And Shelton, strangled by the pulley rope as he fell from his hayloft? And Henry Craig, throttled by his fishnet? And tonight, his son Bill, choked to death by the weeds. What's Bill Craig to do with it? He wasn't even at the hanging. Have you forgotten, Douglas Dow, that he'd return to strangle all of his hangmen and their descendants for generations to come? He's become a scourge, sparing none of our men. Nonsense, nonsense, I say. You're a bunch of superstitious old women. The rope remains where it is. from heaven. Nonsense. The rope was old. 
rotten. It just fell down. It was a sign from heaven. A sign for you to make the sacrifice. And lift the curse. And save the others. Yes, Joseph, heed it. Give yourself willingly into the hands of the strangler and his curse will be broken forever. You must be insane, women. Sacrifice. Where did you get that silly idea? Jenkins told me before the strangler got in. He said that only the sacrifice of one of you or your kin could break the curse. Jenkins was a wise man. He knew a lot about these things. Then why didn't he make the sacrifice? He thought about it, but he waited too long. Sacrifice ridiculous. I'm only 70. That's not old for a man. I plans for the future. My grandchild will come, take over the ferry, and I'll have time to do what I always wanted. Plant sugar cane. Ah, you're all like that. Only noble men are willing to give their lives to save others. You're all small. That's why the curse will never be lifted. Good night, Joseph. Imagination. But how is it? I can see you. Where do you come from? 
from my grave in the swamp. Never the heart and soul of a cursed one are filled with anguish to the brim. I appear. Tonight, it is your soul that calls. You can't be there. You're not real. Your guilty conscience is real. The rope you hang me with is real. Joseph didn't leave much. No. Here are two pairs of trousers. Describe them. One dark, good shape. One gray. Worn, I'd say. Gray. Red bear. Go on. Four. And six shirts. That's all it's here. Six shirts. You're very obliging, Jeffers, to help me with this inventory. Thank you, Christian. I'm always glad to lend a hand. I've been thinking for some time of getting you set into something more solid, more substantial than just our job. Now we have something for you. Me? Oh, I sure thank you, Christian, for thinking about me. I was talking to the council this morning about you. They put up quite an argument, but finally they gave in. They know who's boss. Don't worry. Yes, Jeffers, now you're the new ferryman. Oh, no. No, not for a million dollars. What? Nothing could make me spend even one night here. Well, you're a coward. I don't care what you say. I am afraid, but so are all the others. Why, Anna has influenced you. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I can think for myself. I have my own theories. Where, for instance, is the rope we found around Joseph's neck? It was by the body when we brought him into the village square. Then it was gone. <laughs> Things are not natural. Oh, somebody took it, maybe. Maybe one of the children to play with it. Or the strangler. Oh, you make me sick. Let's go on to the inventory. Oh, look. Here's some letters and papers. Well, uh, here, put them in here. I'll look at them later. Now, how about uh, shoes and boots? And... Well, uh... oh, Christian. Mr. Sanders. Why, Maria. That's right. Here, let me take you back. Well, you were such a little girl. I'd forgotten all about you. It must be ten years ago that you were here. Where's Grandfather? Well, come in and sit down. What's wrong? Has something happened to him? Well, Maria, he wasn't young anymore. He was past 70. Is he dead? Yeah.
When did it happen? How? He had a very easy death, Maria. Just slipped over into a better world. We... We buried him three days ago. It was a nice funeral. All the villagers were there to say goodbye. Oh, I know how you must feel, Maria. Why don't you come and stay at my house for a few days, at least until everything is all right. You're very kind, Mr. Sanders. I hope you won't find the bed too hard. When Chris left home, he was just the age when boys think they can become strong only by denying themselves every comfort. I'm not spoiled. Are you sure you're doing the right thing, Maria? I think so. But, but Maria, running the ferry is awfully hard work. And not for a woman. I'm only doing what I think Grandfather would have wanted. And Mr. Jeffers and Mr. Sanders thought it was a good idea. Said I'd have more customers than I could handle. You see, being all alone, working in the city, well, it isn't much fun. And as far as the work being hard, I can do it. I'm strong. But you'll still be living alone. And, and so far out. I know, but it won't be the same, because it'll be mine. I'm not afraid. No, young people never are. Why? Of what? Everyone seems so nice. Oh, you... You'll think I'm just a superstitious old woman. But... The swamp... The things have happened out there that are not natural. I don't believe in the supernatural. But the danger is real. Oh, don't think I'm trying to give you bad dreams or... or that I'm trying to frighten you away. I'm not. I like you, dear. But I just couldn't bear to see you go out there without giving you a warning, dear. You're very nice, Mrs. Saunders. Thank you so much. Well, I guess I'd better be going downstairs. Mr. Sanders will be through with his meeting now. Good night, Maria. Sleep well under our roof, dear. Thank you. Good night. Well, Christian, I don't see any harm has been done. The girl wants to be our new ferryman. The only danger I can see is in loneliness. It isn't a question of danger. I didn't tell her the whole truth about the death of the grandfather because I wanted to soften the shock. All I ask of you and your women is to keep quiet. I'll tell her the truth when the time comes. I think you did right, Christian. It wouldn't make her feel any better. Well, I guess that's all I wanted to say. Well, good night, Christian. Good night, Joe. Good night, Christian. Good night, Tom. I'd like to stay a minute if it's all right. Yeah. Christian, I'm sure the strangler took it. Okay. Took what? The rope. Just wait for the strangler to get us like he got Joseph. Now that is just nonsense. Joseph Hart committed suicide. I found proof among his papers. Here. Read this. A confession. That he killed Berkeley in a quarrel. And gave wrong testimony. And cowardly enough, I accused Ferryman Douglas. But believe me, neighbors and friends, I haven't had one peaceful hour since. Christian. That means that we... 
We hanged an innocent man. We are guilty of acting too hastily. But what's done is done. And all our regrets won't bring a hanged man back to life. But he is back. He walks among us and kills us one by one. Do no harm. In this sacred place, your power is broken. village afford to have its own doctor instead of bothering you every time? <laughs> uh, they're too sturdy. They simply won't get sick. A doctor would starve here. Only from time to time they get their necks broken. Don't they, Doc? Very true, my boy. Accidents and occasionally a childbirth. The only thing they ever need me for. Goodbye, Maria. Goodbye, doctor. All right, George, pick up the bags, come along. Bye. to get across? Well, don't get excited. I'm not trying to steal it. Just sit down. I'll pull it over. It's my boat. I get paid for doing it. You're uh, independent, aren't you? Maria. Mother wrote me about you. Your mother? Martina Sanders. I'm Christian Sanders, Junior. All right, Junior, now just sit down and don't rock the boat. Well, don't call me Junior, I don't like it. Call me Chris. All right, Chris. Same smell of swamp water. I missed it. I've been pretty homesick for the last three years. You've come home to stay? 
Yep, gonna be a farmer like my dad. Your father's a very important man here. Sure. Sometimes I'm afraid of him. He's so stern. So sure of himself. Well, you don't know him. He's soft as butter. I can wrap him around my little finger. Met any of the boys around here yet? You? Guess they're hanging around here all the time, huh? Oh, no, they're, they're much too nice. Oh, bashful. Well, that's good. That's very good. I'll be seeing you. You know, Chris, I worry every moment when you're home. I long to see you, dear, but why did you have to come home? Why? Well, I love it here. More than any place in the world. I belong here. Chris is right. It'll stop all the stupid rumors and gossip. Don't worry, Mother. I believe in what you yourself taught. We're in the hands of the Almighty and nothing can harm us. Chris. You're not going out. It's your first evening at home. Well, I'm just going out with some of the fellas. You don't stay out too late, son. All right, Dad. A fine boy, your son, Mrs. Sanders. The girls will be crazy about him at the Halloween dance. Say, how would you like to go to a Halloween dance with me? Oh, that will be a busy day for me. Every year I win all the prizes. I'm the best dancer around here. I don't doubt it. I'm sure I'd enjoy it. But who would bring all the guests across? That's crazy. Such a pretty girl worrying about her job. Say, you should marry, have a nice home. I'm happy as I am. Maybe so, but you need protection. You think I'm kidding. Listen, I'll tell you what nobody else in the village is dared tell you, because they're afraid to let you in on a secret of the village. Yep, the big secret of the strangler who roams around and kills people. All right, George, you tell me your story some other time. No, I'll tell you right now. You are in danger, believe me. I can see that. What's the matter with you? Running away from me, eh? I'm a little pickled. I'm sorry. That's all right. Better go home and sleep it off. Thank you, Chris. Next time he gets fresh, push him overboard. I will. Good night. No, you go in first and lock the door. Good night, Chris. Uh, Maria. Yes? Is it... All right, if I stop around now and then, just see everything's all right. You'll find me right here. I can't very well get away. All right, I'll see you tomorrow then. Good night, Chris. Mrs. Ryan today, Chris. She's peeved because you haven't called on Margaret once, although you've been home almost a month. It's really not polite. Well, Margaret bores me. I thought you liked her. You two were... I've outgrown that. Oh, Chris. Look at these dirty shoes. You've been in the swamp again. I plead with you day in and day out, and you won't listen. Death waits behind every bush and tree. No, Mother. Somebody very beautiful and lovely. Maria? Have you seen her often? Yes, I didn't like the idea of her being out there in the swamps alone. She's a very courageous girl. And sweet. Are you in love with her, Chris? Seriously? Very much. Oh, Chris, 
keeping a secret from your mother. What kind of a son are you? Did you tell her? No. Why not? Well, I just can't seem to get up the courage. No, that's a new side to your character. Well, honest, Mom, it isn't as simple as you think. I just can't seem to get the right chance. Then there are times I think she might turn me down. Why should she? You're a handsome boy, come from a good family, and... Well, if I were a young girl, I'd be waiting for you to speak up. Well, I hope she is. Say, so how did Dad pop the question? Well, that was different. You see, we'd known each other since childhood, and we'd always taken it for granted that we'd marry each other. Well, that is different. Let your heart tell you when the right moment comes, Chris. The fewer words, the better then, dear. There, now you won't fall through. Penny for your thoughts. The swamp makes me think of fairy tales. So lovely. Any minute you expect beautiful old legends to come to life. Well, at least somebody doesn't see evil spirits running around. You know, I almost did last night. Why? In the middle of the night, I heard the signal. I ran down and pulled across to the other side. No one was there. I called out. No one. <laughs> there wasn't any answer. So I started back. And? Well, I had the strangest feeling that someone was standing behind me. Look, Maria, you just can't stay out here at night any longer. I won't... But Chris, what do you think I found this morning? A little dead bird lying near the plowshare. In the night, it must have flown right into it. Well, it's an explanation. But believe me, Maria, you can't stay out here at night any longer. You've got to give up this ferry business. I like my job, Chris. What else could I do? Marry me. I love you, Maria. Oh, Chris. I love you very much. The Strangler almost got me. I saw him. I heard his voice. Now, oh, come, 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 come. Don't be a fool. Pull yourself together. What happened? I, I was coming home through the swamp. Suddenly, I saw a shadow and started running. I, I stumbled on a tree root. Then, clammy, wet fingers grabbed me by the throat. I heard his devilish laugh, and then he was gone. I'll never forget it as long as I live. <laughs> when you fell, you got caught in a few wet twigs, that's all. Can't you reason anything out? Oh, maybe I am crazy, but I just can't stand it any longer. I feel the rope hanging over us. You're so sure of yourself. You know everything, don't you? But let me tell you, Christian, there's only one way out for all of us. Sacrifice. Sacrifice? One of us must give himself voluntarily into the hands of the Strangler to break the curse. You're willing to try anything, aren't you? Christian, let me talk to you as one who admires you, thinks highly of you. Mm, come to the point. You're rich and respected. You've accomplished everything that a man can expect of life. Mm, and? The village would always remember you, would, would treasure your memory if, if... If you could bring yourself to make that sacrifice. So you can sleep at night? Yes. Wouldn't it be more logical to save the greatest success in town, me, as you so nicely said, and sacrifice the greatest fool, you, Jeffers? Wouldn't that be more logical? If one of us has to jump in the swamp, it's going to be you. And if a strangler doesn't get you, then pneumonia will. Now get out. Go on, get out. Get out, you crackpot. Oh, this swamp breeds more rumors than mosquitoes. I'm going to call the village council together and do something about it, and at once. We'll dry it up and build a road across it. But you haven't any money. The county turned down your application for funds. Well, I'll find a way. I use the church funds to begin with. Christian, you won't dare. That money is pledged to build a church of our own. These poor people saved it penny by penny. Well, they'll see the importance of my plan. Nothing is more important in any community than a church. Christian, is it possible that that you two, deep in your heart, are afraid of the swamp? That's the most ridiculous statement I ever heard. I'm going over to see Cobb, and I'll be late for dinner. I'm 
I've got it all planned. Tomorrow night you put on your best dress, and I'll come out and get you. We'll go over and see Mom and Dad, and when we get their blessings, we can announce the engagement at the Halloween party. But what about the ferry? Forget about the ferry. How could I, Chris? It's been too much like my life, going back and forth from shore to shore, never resting, never stopping. And I'll never forget that it brought us together. Being here with you, looking into your eyes, for the first time in my life, I know what it means to be home. Oh, yeah. I wasn't talking to you. She's right. We don't want to spend another hour in this cursed village. We're leaving for good. Oh, you coward. Get out of my way. Come on. Where's old Jeffers going? Why, uh, he's running away from the curse. Poor man, scares as easy as a rabbit. Yes. Sit down, son. You're home early tonight for a change. I haven't seen very much of you the last few days. Well, I guess you know where I've been spending most of my time. Yes, I think I do. As a matter of fact, it's had me a little worried. Well, you can forget it. We're getting married. I'm bringing Marie over tomorrow night to meet a new mother and father. I wish I could give you my blessing, son. But I can't. Her grandfather, Joseph Hart, is a murderer. What? He killed Berkeley. Well, you can't mean it. Every word of it. I found his confession after he committed suicide. Suicide? Well, does Maria know this? No, I didn't tell her about it. Well, I don't see why Maria should suffer for a crime her grandfather committed. She's as innocent as I am. I was guilty. Oh, now, don't get excited, son. Why not? There's a murderer in my family. Chris! You helped in the mobbing and hanging of Douglas for a crime somebody else had committed. We had the word of Joseph Hart that Douglas did it. Joseph alone bears all the guilt. Everybody shares in the guilt of that hanging, including you and me. Nonsense. You weren't even there. The sight of Maria fills your righteous heart with horror just because she's kin of a bad man. Then that same horror should shake you every time you look at me, because you're no different than Joseph Hart. Chris, you've said enough. Don't bring that girl in this house. And I won't be here tomorrow night either. Good night.
behind you. What is it, Chris? I saw his face. Whose face? The face of the man they hanged. Took the shortcut. Yes, darling, and ran into a deer trap. It was a strangler. Don't speak. Don't be afraid. Close your eyes. And I'll hurry for Dr. McDaniel. I'll be right back. is doomed. A doctor cannot help. He will die. Once this boat was mine. I know now. What are you going to do? Make sure he dies. Don't. Don't. Is Christian going to try and talk the people out of that church fund in his Halloween speech? He can't do it, can he, Martina? He certainly will try. We won't let him. I want a roof over my head when I pray. Tonight, I shall tell you of my plan to enrich our farmland by draining the swamp. Uh, naturally, a project like this costs money. Uh, since our village isn't wealthy, each of us will have to make sacrifices. Is Chris here? You should know better than I where Chris is, bursting into this house. The strangler's after Chris. What are you saying? The strangler caught him in a deer trap. Is he dead? He was almost dead when I found him. Well, where is he? I don't know. I was running for the doctor when the strangler stopped me. Well, never mind the strangler. Where was Chris? I, I, I took him to the hut and, and then he was gone. And I, oh, if he 
in the swamp, the strangler. Well, tell Mr. Sanders, tell the others, tell them to start a search. I'll go ahead. Now, whoever finds Chris first, will take him across to the doctor. Do you understand? Yeah. All right. Let the fool run, I'll mm. get him too. Don't move. Stay here and tell no one. as long as I live. I'll get you to the doctor. He can't follow there.
here in the chapel. There is no escape. He will die. I'll wake the village. They'll bring help. We must destroy him. He's dying. He's dying. He's dying. Nothing can save him. I can save him. Don't, Maria. Don't cross the threshold. We're safe on the inside. Don't cross. Your cruel hands shall not touch him anymore. I give myself willingly into your hands. Take me. Give up the fight. Leave vengeance to the Almighty. Make peace with him. Make peace with him. Leave the living alone. Thanks for watching the Baba Ghoulie Show by OTR Halloween Holidays. This is Waddle the Duck saying check out Channel Watch Waddle for some fun cartoons with no static. <laughs>